Uh, good evening, guys. Ken at Tortoise Capital. This is the nightly strategy podcast for Saturday, uh, October 16th, 2021. So uh, if you're in the sound of my voice, uh, you are invited to make the best possible investment in a better future that you could make. Uh, and your ticket to enter the Catalyst workshop is send me your five-minute true story on my best advice to my 20-year-old self, uh, because I'm going to share that story of your best advice with my Leadership Academy players in the Leavenworth Soccer Association in our academy. Uh, I'm going to let you include a brochure if you wish. And if you don't believe me that the best investment on the future, uh, and it's a sure thing, by the way, it's the only thing that I know that's a sure thing, uh, is read the brochures from my two captains, the the notes from the captains, Paige and Natalie. Um, I've attached them that email, and I'm going to put in chat here in a minute. And it'll be on, I've sent them on Patreon already, but that's my two captains, uh, two of my captains, I should say, talking about uh, what they've learned and what they're doing. And you'll, you will uh, agree with me that the future is uh, already in good hands. So make the best possible investment in the future and send me your five minute true story on my best advice to my 20 year old self. Uh, if you need more, okay, read on. And I'm going to say thanks to my uh, good friend and my hero, and he doesn't even know it, Rico Smith, who told me today that uh, I will provide a five-minute snapshot of my true life's journey. And then this whole plan fell into place. That was the final piece that I needed. And when Rico Smith says he's going to do something, that thing is going to get done. He's a retired uh, fire captain from Los Angeles County with 40 years of public service running that thing. And when he says something's going to get done, you can bet on that too. Um, so I want you to imagine Union Station in Chicago. That's a, the train station downtown. And it's a great big theater in the round for trains that are crisscrossing the country. And I want you to imagine hundreds of train tracks coming into Union Station with all sorts of trains that are leaving and entering. There's long hauls and locals, cargo trains and people movers. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear the lonesome whistle of the super chief heading into the night. Thanks, Mr. Cash, the man in black. And I want you to imagine the big scheduling signboard for all to see, listing all the trains and their destinations. And I want you to imagine the hundreds and thousands of folks in Union Station deciding which train to get on. And they're consulting the schedule and reading brochures. And I want you to listen to all the stories that they have lived that brought them there. And I want you to hear all the stories that they're going to share on the train with their fellow travelers. And I want you to think of the stories that they share and the ones they hear and how that will shape them while they're on the train, going wherever those trains are going to take them. So I want you to picture the Catalyst Workshop as the traveler's true storytelling circle for all these amazing people, just like you. Each of you has an introductory true story about your life to tell that begins with five-minute advice to my 20-year-old self, and it should end with a brochure. It could end with a brochure. But you say, wait a minute, Ken. Uh, I'm not amazing. Who would want to listen to little old me? Uh, and I'm going to tell you, hush, that's not your call to make. You don't get to decide if you're amazing. Trust people when they tell you that you are amazing and just move along and keep doing what you're doing. So I want your five-minute story. It can be a video. It can be a one-page takeaway sheet. Your choice. Uh, and if you decide to do a brochure, that brochure is a one-page takeaway with your business card information and a list of useful references for the people that listen to your story. And one good practical exercise or a true story seed for them to consider that prompts them to reflect on your story. 
and the brochure could have an invitation to share their reflection on our bulletin board in that course uh, or attend a live true, cir true storytelling circle on Zoom. Uh, and it might include your ebook to download. Right? You could give it away or sell it for two ninety nine with the proceeds to support your favorite charity. And just let me say right now that uh, an investment in a youth leadership academy is not a charity. It's the best possible investment in a better future that you can make. So choose your faculty wisely. And that's why I'm asking you to submit your story. You are the best faculty that we could possibly have. So your brochure might include an offer to come to your weekly office hours to discuss anything they might want to discuss with you because they felt your story resonate with them. And that's going to lead to an opportunity because you will have created with your true story, you will have created a safe and trusted space where the truth may be told and an opportunity will emerge. And your brochure might also have the name and lesson titles of a workshop in your specialty where you teach skills. And it could include a ticket to a free showing of your more detailed work in your own personal gallery. And I'd be happy and honored to host and showcase your gallery for free if you want, so that your truth could be shared with the whole future, our kids. So, an investment in a youth leadership academy is the best possible bet you could make on the future, so choose your faculty wisely. I'm going to be sharing your true stories on your best advice to your 20-year-old self with all my soccer players and their families because I value what you're going to say, and I'm looking forward to hearing it, and they need to hear it too. Um, those kids, they are already our future today. It's their world. We're just living in it, and we need to be good caretakers and custodians and supporters of their journey. So I'll post your brochure if you decide to make one, and I'll help you make one if you need help. So let's go all aboard. And the two captain's notes one from Paige and one from Natalie, will convince you beyond any shadow of a doubt that the world is already in great hands. I'm such an optimist for the future. You, you can't believe it. So send me your true story. Best advice to my 20-year-old self. Get it done. That gets you a ticket into the Catalyst Workshop, which is... It's not free, but your cover charge is your story. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about a trader, Ken H., the exemplar. And I'm going to tell him as we get ready to look at his open trades that I've never seen him trading better than I am, than he's trading right now. And I say that in public with the full knowledge that I'm putting all his good practice at risk by saying that in public because he might listen to me and decide to do something different than what he's doing. And if you do that, Ken H., I'm coming after you. Don't change a thing except to get better. Because um, I've done that before. I've told somebody that they were trading really well, and then they took that as um, a reason to increase risk and get larger and to be bolder, and I... Uh, and I upset their apple cart but when I said that, so I'm very mindful of what I tell you what, about what I think about your trading. And I'm just going to say as we go through these charts, ask yourself, do you want these trades? Do you want to trade like this? Then do what Ken H. does, and that is craft work, due diligence, professional grade. He does the work. He chops wood and carries water. And he'll tell you that the best way to do that was the bar-by-bar -bar training that we did in public, on the record, in, um, in front of the world during COVID. And it raised his skill level uh, to a whole new level. So I'm going to say that about this little set of swing trades that he's got today. If you've been attending... You know, the weekend workshops before you already know 
that what I just said was true. But I just, I've never seen them better than this. And he's embarrassed in public. Good. So deal with it. I only say that, Ken, to see if I can throw you off your game. I want to see if you can, uh, if you can handle praise in public. He's sneaky. He doesn't like to be recognized. He's an IT guy. So just get over yourself. Learn how to shake that off and just keep going. All right, so uh, first one up tonight is, um, let's see. Uh, annotate. Uh, there it is. So this one is in Squarespace, the financial disruptor, and what he's given us here is the... Um, Stand by. Let me plug in my tablet. All right. He's given us the daily. Oops. Let's do that in blue. Dummy. So he's given us the daily and the 30-minute. That's a best practice, that relationship between those two. That's hybrid which means it's smart. Uh, his open trade right now on the daily, you can see, is uh, getting short in here. And uh, the first series that he did was, here's a couple of trades in the third, so that's trade one, trade two, and trade three. And what that looks like is this one. He saw the great big sell-off. He saw it bottom out. He saw the, the SSC here. Uh, but it gapped up and ran right away, so he waited for the next little pop. Enter. Stop. Fade. Cash. Caught a two. Here's a caught a two. A low. A rising low after a strong move up. He buys that same position back at exactly the place. He's taken the same trade. Only he already made that money, which can fund this trade. And he gets, there's a, a higher low, a gap up, it starts to fail, cash. Oh, I, I thought he was short here. He's not short here. It could have been. I think he would wait to see that fail before he goes. Very nice work. And uh, notice he's, we got this little zigzag formation coming down here. That's the descending channel. And so he's he's playing that reversal, so it gets to an extreme. Could he have done that here? Yes. Could he have done it here? Yes. Oh, in fact, he did. So that's how you do the channel. And once that starts rolling over, uh, read the signs. That's the channel. We'd love to see this thing find support here or even here and then take off. Would you take that trade if it breaks out from here? Yes, you would, because it's now going to test this and go. And if that goes, it's going to go to here. He's got that already programmed out here and then here. And if those work, up, up, and away with the disruptor. Measure twice, cut once. Nicely done. Wheat and precious metals. RLXD. It's an owl pattern, too. As the dragon rolls over and the RL30 rolls over, there's your owl entry right there. It's also a collapsing dragon. Oh. That's the, the short of all shorts. Uh, 
Uh, and then there's your harsh winter. And there's where it bottoms out. It crosses the baby dragon, enters the dragon, leaves the dragon. Oh, guess what he does right there? SSC. Right by the numbers. Harsh winter, crosses the baby dragon, crosses the dragon, RL10 turns to spring, PSAR flip, a stop here. Two days it runs up and then starts to fail. So here's what his entry looks like on the 30-minute chart. And even inside that one, he has decided here's a triple bottom, a double bottom, and then a kata two. Can't you just feel that? Hold support, raises his stop once it breaks out, comes up through this, he puts a stop in, but it gapped down. He put a stop in right here, but it gapped down, so he gets out like he's supposed to, and he cashes that win. Perfection. You can't do it better than that. Can you? Well, we'll see. Uranium. Oh, my God, is this a thing of beauty. 30 minute and daily. So he sees the bottoming. There's he considered that as an SSC because there's the flip. He lets it go. He waits for a Z2 breakout because of reasons. Adds a second position on the Z3 breakout. And when that when it breaks above the higher high of the previous day, thought about adding a third one here. So he decides to add a third position. Then once it starts rolling over, cash. Massive goodness. That's a trade from 60 to 78. That's plus 18 on the first position with about mm, a $2 risk. So that's about 9. That one's about 8. And that one's about 2. So that's what that's what 19R looks like, uh, and then he's reframing it again. He thought about this one, didn't take it. Takes the entry, takes the second entry, cashes the win. Here's what this now. Here's what this one looks like over here. He, he finds it bottoming out here. This trade is that trade. There's his pinch box. There's the Z3 pinch. It starts moving out early on the 30 minutes, so he buys it at the Z2 breakout, puts a stop in at the belly of the dragon. There's his risk. Two bucks. There's his second position running up nicely. caches it next day it gaps up and goes so he tries it up oh, fail so take one or and then the next day it immediately re so he just re-enters runs up closes here puts his stop right there it opens exits and he caches that one and then that one protects him from all of this crap dude your your trade on Uranium was, may I say, radioactive. T remember, tip your waitresses, guys. CRWD, CrowdStrike Holdings. That sounds modern and hip. Whatever. He, there's a Kata 2 right there. It doesn't matter which ones you don't take. The market doesn't remember. It doesn't get mad. Like here was an SSC. There's an SSC. There's a 1, 2, 3 exit. There's the RLXD entry on the short side. Here's a collapsing dragon on the short side there. There's your harsh sell-off. 
into the winter. That makes this an SSC. He doesn't take it. It doesn't matter. The market keeps going. There's this move, which he does take. Then there's this one, which is that entry, and this little exit is that one. So there's an entry in here that you can't see. That's right here. This is that. This is that. So uh, this is a combination of like a, a slow SSC, which we would call an owl, because you have the reversal. Now the RL10 crosses and goes. The dragon is rolling up. The RL30 is rolling up. It has makes a 1, 2, 3 entry. He makes a risk box of here. Uh, it runs all the way up. He says, finally, he says, I just can't stand it anymore. Let me get my second position in in order to make this thing end. It starts rolling over. He raises his stop to here, scratches that trade, and now he's ready to go here or to go there. 4R on this one, scratch on that one. That took three days. Um, this one is still open. This is Riot, a blockchain. Support. There's an SSC. There's an exit in here somewhere. There's a short right here. There's a there's a Kata 2 entry, which would have paid. There's a uh, pocket entry. Here's a collapsing dragon. That's what a collapsing dragon looks like. Here's another collapsing dragon. And here's where it terminates in support right where you would expect, which makes this an SSC. He waits for the higher low. That makes this a Kata 2 entry right there. And that's this one. There's the strong support, there's his box, and that trade is going to work. And uh, could this go from 27 to 37? From 27 to 37? That's uh, 40%. Could it do that again? Well, it just did, and it went from... 27 to 40 and that feels like a changing of the guard that the Bears got what they wanted there's the changing of the guard and here's his Kata 2 entry where's the money come to fund that see previous trades Adobe. Oh gosh, I just you guys are getting tired of me saying this, but look, here's a harsh sell-off. There's an SSC. When the when the RL30 and the dragon roll up, that makes this an owl. And on the owl, the stop is down here. So, SSC, OWL, Kata 2, I, would, I might also consider that to be an emerging dragon because it took out the hump already. Take your pick. And for all of those... In this one, the stop is here. For these two, the stop is here. 
Here's a Z three P. Oh, you know what else this is? Plus one if you know. It's a super pinch. A super pinch is like this little acorn of potential all tightly compressed just waiting to explode to the upside. How do you know it's a super pinch? Well, you have the Z3 lines pinched to abnormally tight level. You have the RL270. The RL90 is the green line. And then the RL30 is the black line. And then the price. All of those, I mean, you can't get any tighter than this. That's the superest pinch you ever saw. So we're just going to call that the superest pinch ever. So where do you enter? All right, take your pick. SS, uh, SSC, the OWL, the Kata 2, the Z3 pinch breakout. This one, it failed to fail and took off again. I'd argue you could take that one, or you could take that one, or you could take that one, and 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 exit. Exit when the PSAR flips. Look at the PSAR. Use the Bollinger Band mean as your stop for your manager for half the position. You're in that trade until here. For at 650, you exit, and you entered at 500. Could you take that one? Sure you could. There's a collapsing dragon right here. Here's it leaves the river. It crosses Z2. It breaks down below Z3. There's a collapsing dragon and a Z3 pinch breakdown. And what would you call that? Uh, harsh winter? Crosses the baby dragon. Enters the dragon. Turns to spring. Crosses the RLXD. The PSAR flips. There is your S. S C when the RL when the dragon rolls over and the RL thirty rolls over, there is an owl. And here's the trade, and now he's got to stop in here. So on the thirty minute, there's his three rising or two rising lows. Kata two could have added. Uh, he's getting. I think he may have added one there, or getting ready to add. That one's so deep in the money, you can't even stand it. Look at that's a 585 to 575. That's a ten dollar risk, and it's at 610. So that's plus that's plus 25 bucks on a ten dollar risk. That's 2.5 in hand with momentum. Of course, you add a second position right there, and then raise that stop to no lose plus dinner for two as soon as you can. And where's it going to go? Uh, 665. 650, 635. There's just a ladder of prices on the way up, just like there was a ladder of prices on the way down. Those are road signs and intersections, and you know how to drive a car in traffic. You know, get there alive. That's exit management in a sensible way. CRWD, cybersecurity company, said Ken H. I knew as an IT guy that he would have a, a reason to like it. I just like it because he likes it. I don't even have to know why he likes it. And he's kind enough to share his setups. He's not being kind. He's sharpening his tool by posting his things and listening to the feedback. So that makes him do his best work in public. He's not doing it out of goodness of his heart, although he is, because I know him. But he's doing it because it's good for him. There's the PSAR flip. There is the short signal. There's the harsh winter. Here's the Z3 pinch breakdown. You could add a position there if you were going short. Hold support, crosses the baby dragon, enters the dragon, leaves the dragon. The PSAR flips, turns to spring. So this is an SSC. This is the owl. You know, and as long as you're getting long before it crosses the Bollinger Band mean, 
you're on the correct side of value. So on the 30-minute chart, or I'm sorry, on the hourly chart, look, he's got a low, a higher low, caught a two. That's an entry at 1550-ish. That's like right in here. So he's even front-running the SSC and the OWL. And he makes 1.6R on that one. And why did he get out of it? Because this thing ran all the way up to Z3 and started to fail. And he said, man, if I let this thing go all the way back to here, Ken's going to tell me about it. So he locks in 1.6R. And then it fails to fail further, holds support at the PSR, crosses the dragon with a gap up. So he buys it, reenters the position. There's his risk. Bang. And it falls through his support. His stop, and he locks in 35 I see uh, Les joining. Hey, Les, I'm sorry about missing our 6 o'clock. The spirit was willing, but the body was weak. And I'm going to, well, while you're here, I'm going to, I will go do the uh, Foundations Q&A right after this if you want to hang on. And the rest of you guys are welcome to listen, too, if you'd like. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Um, so this is TX. Uh, Turnium the Steel Company. He buys it in the rising tide. He considered this, considered that. It rolls over. There's a one, two, three exit. Locked it in. Here was a trade that he um, locked in. Exited. Um, couldn't make a new high. PSR was rolling over. The dragon had a lower high. There's the short. That is the supported winter crossing. Notice how the fall turns to winter right below the collapsing dragon. That's the biggest short signal you ever saw. From 52 and then 10 days later it's at 42. That's a 20% trade right there. And then it gives you a a low, crosses the baby dragon. Oh, it didn't enter the dragon. So you don't go long yet. You're waiting for it to get up in here. It didn't. It rolled over. Didn't really fail much further. Held support. Ah, crosses the baby dragon, crosses the dragon, crosses the... P he takes the entry at that second, you know, that trailing PSAR dot. Enters caches um that's this one enters rolls up then starts to fail eh, takes it now probably too tight i disagree that's that's what one r looks like well were you going to optimize this you know where you want to get back in at 45 why because the metals you saw from the weekend report that xlb and xme the metals <coughs> are doing very well tx and aa you know uh, steel aluminum are both really doing well we saw a massively good trade yesterday uh from friday from in alcoa on the weekend on the uh, daily debrief so i just take i'll take the one r and i know how to re-enter i know you know how to re-enter we're in early days on this one this is just getting out of the station so if that goes, it's going to go through that gap pretty fast and get to 48. So you'll add a second position here. And then, look, it, it made that big sell-off. That all happened in one day. That's almost as if it were a gap. It's going to get back to um, fair value is 52. That's the RL270 is long-term fair value, 52. And if it gets through there with your third entry, it's going to get to 56, and then it's game on. 
This is just recovering from the horrible selling that everybody was afraid of. You're making steel. What do we need? Steel. Rebuilding America. Getting it on sale. So just re that's the case for the long side. You take a measured entry because there's other things that we can do. Just re-enter. Key to sanity. I'd rather be on the outside wishing I was in than on the inside wishing I was out. How do I know where I want to get in? Well, I want to get in if it goes above this because then all of that little selling is forgiven. So just get back in again here. Perfection. I, I've never seen them trading better. Um, just so proud of you. And he owes me his uh, best advice to his 20-year-old self because he's in the True Storytelling Workshop with me, with my mentor, David Boji, who created the genre and the theory behind it. You know, he's been working on storytelling and narrative in the world for 50 years and is the world's authority on it in scholarly circles. The guy's got over a 1,000 published articles. He was cited 1,500 times last year in scholarly papers. And he's teaching us true storytelling from the heart. And he's already, and David Boji has given me his best advice to his 20-year-old self already with a beautiful brochure. Oh, my goodness. Makes me humble to work with him. I can't believe he would have me as a student. But like I said in that email, uh, it's not your job to question yourself like that. Um, it's your job to trust other people when they tell you stuff. That's kind of what it is. So, Ken H., you owe me your uh, true story. Five minutes. And then you also owe me your research project uh, for the uh, research weekend. I want to see your histogram. All right. Uh, let me reset my brain here for the... Um... <clears throat> All right. We're going to head back into the um, foundations course. Uh, so let's see, there's our day trading, systems thinking, swing trading, boot camps, Forex, 12 years of live research and live trading workshops, strategic and systems thinking course, the hybrid trading course. Oh, there it is, foundations. So let's see, that's all the folks that have took it in April and July, and now the October course, and then here is the weekly Q&A. Oh, people who take that course get bonus presentations from last year's, the Q&A sessions from last year's hybrid trading, unbelievably good, with 25 hours of materials. And uh, Phil and Griff are documenting those things uh, for us to create those powerful note sheets. And the glossary project is where folks going through the foundations course uh, that are hearing me use words that uh, maybe haven't been defined or, haven't heard, or is not in the glossary, they're just add them there so we can add them to the glossary. And... Uh, I've asked the folks to take the foundations course to have the glossary with them and they do it so they can kind of go back and forth. And then with their due diligence and very good questions, then uh, we will be uh, improving the glossary as we go. It's on version three right now, but there's a few things um, we probably need to add to that. Right?
Yeah, so that's uh, the bonus presentations from the 2020 hybrid course. Um, each one of those was about seven hours of presentations because I collected all of the uh, questions that they had submitted over the previous three months of coursework. We were doing nightly workshops all the way through COVID. That was the best trading we ever did, and you know, and um, Ken would attest to that, Ken H. And then we did uh, uh, seven sessions of follow-up Q&A just on a weekly basis to sort of lock in all the goodness of that hybrid trading. I mean, that's there's so much gold in that. Um, I, I can't tell you how good that is. Yeah, Les asked me uh, about the one, two, three exit. Can I explain that further? I certainly will. I owe you that since I slept through the the previous session, right? So the weekly Q and A. So the weekly Q and A. Uh, what happens is the foundations guys, as they go through the course material, when they have questions, they come post them in here. And then on the weekend, I answer those questions when I'm awake. And um, we record that session. And so these are the, these were all the weekly Q&A sessions we recorded from the folks who took the initial version of this from April, in April 2021. So it was 11 weeks through, uh, uh, through June, and then there were some you know there were some specials in there. We talked about critical states, the minimum manageable risk box, the difference between execution R and position sizing R. Had some psychology stuff. The supported uh, it should be supported spring crossing and kata two. Um, more on indicators. A session we did for the Europeans. Um, the second session started in July. And the two-hour course introduction is really pretty good. And um, so then we've started this one, how to set up the screen, the introduction, daily prep, how to execute the trading plan. Um, that's the recording of the session from last week, the introduction, which was really good, they say. And then, so what we do is, guys... Uh, type their questions into the comment box way at the bottom and then we answer those in writing so here's the questions and then everything in bold is my answer to that um, if I did I wonder control F and I wrote one two three I wonder no, there was no answer on that one. Okay. So coming all the way down through, now we're into June, July. There's some discussing about some swing trading and hybrid stuff. get to the bone. So there's quite a few Q&As. So that's the stuff that uh, Phil Wu and uh, Griff Cooper put together. The specific note sheets for each one of those workshops or, or those recordings and uh, itemized it into a concise one-page note sheet with all the key terms, the timestamps for all the videos, an amazing resource. So Les, if you haven't downloaded that yet, you probably want to download those. Uh, James is a, is a student who's also been demonstrating the power of the um, collaborative learning. And he's describing how he is adapting our work to his particular situation. And that's often the most helpful things of all. So here's Les's notes. Um, he's adopted the mantra of slow and steady. 
Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. From what I, He's listening to my team captains, so that's a good thing. Uh, they, they, uh, you should listen to your team captain. So he's intent on getting foundational knowledge solid. Videos from the prior Q&A sessions are excellent. No particular questions this week. Well, that's not quite true. You know, get the one, two, three exit. Um, uh, he's keen to start putting up some simple trade frames in the next few weeks. When you say the word keen, that tells me you're from Australia, if I'm right. Um, I value your insight. Being on the playing field is the best practice. Yeah, traders trade. So I'm, I'm thinking to just start with the supported spring crossing. Absolutely. The SSC and the Kata 2. And you saw a dozen examples of that tonight with Ken H's um, technique. And literally, it looks like this. You know, the whole setup for that thing is harsh winter. So that's going to be the RL10. Heart, oof. Harsh winter. And then that RL10 reverses. And where it reverses, uh, guaranteed, that's going to be where the, when the PSAR flips and starts working its way up, because this thing is going to go, where the RL10 bottoms out is where the PSAR flip is going to flip when it flips. And on those long, sliding, harsh winters, that PSAR is working its way down until such time as it gets down here, and then price is moved up, and so then it flips to here. Okay? And, uh, yeah, for your SSC, so here's the baby dragon. So that little baby dragon... is simply the simple moving average 3 on the RL10. It's the simple moving average 3 of the RL10 makes the baby dragon. So when this thing bottoms out, harsh winter, reverses crosses the baby dragon alert now at some point we're going to have the dragon in here which is that so the dragon That's the uh, Bollinger Band 10, plus or minus 0.5 standard deviations. All right, That's, that creates, so the, the middle, the spine of the dragon right there is a simple moving average 10, because it takes the 10 period look back, and then it creates the, the mean, the average, is the simple moving average 10, and then it computes the standard deviation, which is math. And then it takes the value of the SMA10. Let me go this way. It takes the value of the SMA10. It plots that as a point. And then it moves up plus 0.5 SD and minus 0.5 SD, and then that creates the width, or the height, if you will. I think of it as the width. That's the width of the, uh, of the dragon. And then when you put a bunch of those together, and then just connect those with lines, it looks like it's moving. And then the... Uh, You know, the, the body of the dragon looks like that. 
then you connect those lines and then you shade that now that looks like the dragon it looks like a dragon and when he so now when price crosses that the regression line crosses the dragon that's what we mean by RLXD somewhere in here that will turn the RL10 will turn from winter to spring I should I, I'm gonna it's hard to see that spring but it wait made the decision to make that yellow so your SSC entry um, is going to be somewhere in this area it has to have crossed the dragon and then your stop is going to be down here now sometimes that PSAR will have flipped. Sometimes it's one or two bars late, but that's a good entry right there. And then you just make your stop right here, and that's your that's your wrist box at the place where the bottom of the RL10 occurred. Now, why is that a good one? Because that's the st statistically significant location for the bottoming of price. Now, what happens is when price is moving down, you know, the RL10 is a smooth form of that. And when it when price moves up, the RL10 reverses. This price where the bot where the RL10 bottoms out is the statistically significant Uh, limit of the downward price action now you'll notice that there's a little bit of extra wiggle room there where the tail of the bar we treat that as noise so when you put your stop here right and now price starts falling through that somewhere up here price starts falling through that that's all you need to know it just violated that price. Now, other folks will put their stop down below the very tip of that candle, but we're executing at the statistically significant level. That's the difference between signal and noise. This smoothed RL10 makes it abundantly clear where our stop needs to be, and now we're out of that position, and on a collapsing dragon, we're already short on the collapsing dragon, and then what we're really betting on is that when it makes that final noise through that little barrier and all of those stops that are down here are hit, that thing will fail fast. But we're already in the position because we got short here, not waiting for this and then trying to chase it as it turns into a falling knife. We're not trying to catch a falling knife because we got short at the statistically significant signal, which is the bottom of the RL10. So that's the collapsing dragon. That's why we set it up that way. That's how that relates to this whole trade process. So if you think of the long trade here as the SSC and then eventually the OWL, if that were to fail, this signal right here is actually our preferred signal because that's the collapsing dragon. So you have a fail, and it's starting to reverse, and if that works, it's the SSC and the OWL, but if that fails, it's our preferred trade, which is the collapsing dragon. So there's a lot of goodness, and all of that is set up by a harsh winter, exceptionally bad price action. The worse, the better. And then this is the virtuous turning, and then the return to fair value or the continuous fail to the bottom, all right? So that's really crucial. I'm going to answer the question about the one, two, three here in a second. So just starting with the SSC, absolutely yes. 
do the trade frames have to be current or can they be from prior months for learning and feedback either one is acceptable and can you can you post trade frames from the ends from the New Zealand exchange yes oh you're from New Zealand not from Oz uh, to those of us north of the equator or the civilized lands uh, to us that's the same thing what's the difference between Australia and New Zealand well it's the different you would say it's the difference between lightning and the lightning bug I suppose um, but I love the Kiwis let's go all blacks the all blacks all right so we're, we're going to talk about the one two three now as a special refinement of exits and entries so when that big harsh winter was happening and it starts to make that turning point that we just described where the RL10 bottomed out and then started going. What you'll notice is if, if you zoom in on that, you would now, you would see that series of bars going. And what we're noticing is that each time that it makes a lower low, that's, a, that's significant. It's telling us, oh, there's more pain and suffering. Ah, more pain and suffering. Ah, more pain and suffering. Right. until at some point you get the maximum adverse excursion and now instead of making a new low it makes a higher low when this uh, when you see this exit when that you see that bar exits just for example right there and that bar has closed and now it's going to open and start to do something else at the moment of closure we can say that is bar two which makes this one bar one which means that the low of bar two is higher than the low of bar one and you don't know if this one is bar one until bar two closes because until it closes it may still come down and make a lower low and then suddenly that would no longer be bar two or bar one and that wouldn't be bar two this is now a new candidate for bar one so as things are coming down the stack this is tentatively bar one and then it closed here and then it opened here and now this thing is moving around and doing whatever it's going to do uh, as long as it has not yet made a new low this thing is still tentatively bar two until it closes and then you say aha it closed and now it's getting ready to open when that happens then that is no longer tentatively bar one and bar two those are actually bar one and bar two right because that is now bar two because it made a higher low it closed with a higher low and that makes this bar one so this this bar is now by definition bar three and now what we're going to do is for an entry a one two three entry simply means that bar three makes a new high from bar two without making a new low below bar two right so bar we place now that line underneath bar two and say now bar three you're live you're on the clock if you make as long as you don't you can do this all day long and it's fine just don't go below don't go below that line and you are still bar three if it goes below 
that red line below bar 2, then this is no longer bar 3, and this is no longer bar 2. If it goes below that line. But if it doesn't violate that line, then this is still bar 3. And now, if it goes through the green line, we have an entry. And then you can place the stop wherever you think it makes sense. It could be we could consult the bottom of the RL10 and then make our wrist box like that. We could decide to go to the low of bar 2 and make it there. We could go to the uh, bottom of bar 1 and make it there. We could consult our preparation and say, what is the minimum manageable risk box for that symbol? Like maybe it's a half of a frog box or whatever. You pick the, you pick the size of the risk that is appropriate for the context of the trade and the symbol and your experience and what is manageable and the time of day and the anyway so you pick you pick your execution risk to be the price that if it violates then the hypothesis that this is going up is false but that's what a one two three entry looks like that is usually earlier almost always earlier than the SSC right because the you know the SSC is going to look like this and then you have like I showed the dragon and uh, I'm just going to keep showing that as red although at some point in here that thing you know it crossed the baby dragon as you recall so um, it bottomed out it was a harsh winter it bottomed out it crossed the baby dragon it entered the dragon it left the dragon at some point the PSAR is gonna flip and it's at the same price level as the belly of the RL 10 so when this thing is going up then it's normal for us to enter somewhere around in here or at the owl this would be the SSC this would be the owl entry it's an owl entry if you wait for the dragon to roll over and start working his way up right so once the dragon starts rolling up and once the the RL 30 has rolled up when the when that happens then you get the owl entry the owl needs that fourth criteria of the dragon rolling up and the fifth criteria of the RL 30 rolling up to constitute an owl and that's usually you know one two three or four somewhere it's a little bit later in time uh, so the SSC is the third criteria of the owl the third criteria of the owl the S the uh, RLXD is also the entry criteria for the SSC the owl just asks for a little more confirmation that's all well if that's our template for the standard entry there are times when price action makes us want to get in sooner all right. or even better wouldn't it be nice to be short that harsh winter that's making everybody pain and suffering especially hey somewhere up here there was a collapsing dragon and we got short so we're managing that trade and so I'm not gonna wait all the way for that much retracement to get out of that 
because I'm already convinced I can go long in here, so I'm not going to give back all of that move. On a really good trade, what I'll do is I'll watch this thing going down, and then it's a one, two, three. Ah, and I'll take that as my one, two, three exit. And that will often happen, like here's the... Here's the price that bottomed out, and then one, two, three. In fact, if I was going to be aggressive on my entry, I might take a one, two, three entry. That's a one, two, three entry. Hey, that thing is also, whoops, was also a, uh, a one, two, three exit from the short position so it's just enough to terminate that why do we care about that well on the other end you'll see uh, you saw a lot of ken h's trades where uh price was moving up you know it mucked around inside some little sideways quiet channel then made a cut of two and then started taking off and that thing just started really working and when you draw the when you look at the Bollinger Band mean, you you see those Bollinger Bands like this, and then it really starts exploding. And while that trade is really working and it's close to the Z threes, at some point that thing starts to stall, and it goes peak two three. You can just feel the depression in my voice there. Too. one two three exit and that will typically on on the better move that there was and this is the bollinger band mean in the middle of that thing and so the bb mean that's the reversion to the mean that's the least surprising move least surprising move so when you get this extraordinary gain to the upside notice extraordinary that's an abnormal move the normal move is the ball is if it were just to track the Bollinger Band mean so when that thing starts to fail Remember, the least surprising move is back to the Bollinger Band mean from that peak moment. So this 1, 2, 3 exit gives back that much, but protects again, it preserves the profit usually two or three times that. That little move is given back one in order to preserve two. So the one, two, three exit on the top side looks like that. The one, two, three entry on the bottom side looks like that. One, two, three entry. And that's also, again, like I said, the one, two, three exit from the short position. And the one, two, three exit on the long position might also be the one, two, three entry on the short that's playing back to the Bollinger Band main, if you want to do that. So that's what we mean by the one, two, three. So how about that? Uh, New Zealand? Les, are you a Kiwi? There you are. That's the All Blacks.
there it is, that little fern leaf. I have a nice coffee cup upstairs with that on there. Love, I love me some New Zealand. I think I'm probably going to go watch the Hakka for Jonah Lomu once again, whenever I need the motivation. There you go. All right. That's everything I got for tonight. Um, and um, we'll get this posted and, um, and published. So take good care, guys. We all good?